ninjas <laughs> in all cases of writer's block or writer's confusion or the you've pissed off the characters add some ninjas you can take them out later it's okay <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a different panel I do called add some ninjas getting to writer's block but I just gave you pretty much most of the panel <laughs> anyone else when you have these conversations where you actually decide to delete the scene, how often is it where you come to some point where that's not with motivation for a character or some backstory for a character that causes them some sort of conflict that you've gone back and, and sort of that or have gotten a better idea of the character through that and utilized it somewhere else? Never. <laughs> I, I tell it that it's going to be around later. <laughs> um, there's a scene that I did up for a gal to kind of introduce her to a character that she wanted to play. Um, I might even have it here, but I don't think I do. Um, but Because uh, I just realized my external hard drive is still up in the room since I am. Um, however, in it, this guy basically explains to her that he just gave her this drug that makes her loyal to him. And prior to that, she may have wanted to kill him, but now, with hatred and disgust in her heart, she will do everything in her power to protect him. And that's going to be extremely convenient, because he is a Domenici. And just pissed off his family. Mm. That will probably never see the light of day. But I love that scene. And it lives over there, because I know that character needs that scene to stay alive. When Boots is actually put into the story, it's going to be a little bit different. But I know her character through that development point. God forbid she actually does meet up with Dominic because she'll probably kill him out of principle. <laughs> I don't know why I hate you, but I feel so much better now. <laughs> Anyone else? I have no desire to like Tom, but um. That's okay. You're asking questions, and these people might spring more off of that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And they're certain. Calling on people. Anyway. <laughs> well, one for all my runs, well, all my writing, but how do you create the bridge between scenes? Like, say, for instance, you have a character and they have to, you know, go somewhere, like from point A to point B. How do you get them from one point to another without necessarily having a whole bunch of redundant writing, but not having them just like seeing an instantly tell them? You understand what I'm saying? Who here has seen Sixth Sense? That's a shame because you were asking this question and you haven't seen that movie. Um, in this movie, Bruce Willis is talking to this kid. And the scene cuts away. And then Bruce Willis is sitting in the living room with the kid's mother. And the room is quiet. And they both look like they're contemplating something. And you know that Bruce Willis is like a psychologist or something like that? And you assume they've been talking about what he and the boy were talking about on the way over on the bus. We didn't need to go all the way up and hear the conversation because it turns out we assume we can fill in those blanks because we're really smart. Turned out he was a freaking. Well, anyway, because you haven't seen it. Spoilers! 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 Anyway, that's how you do it. Um, in the movie Misfits with Marilyn Monroe, that was the first time a screenshot, really, really, really extreme close up. I mean, not like white nose hairs, but you know, this was the shot. 
was done. And people were telling Cecil B. DeMille, said, hey, he cut off the top of her head. And the top of, I think it was uh, Clark Gable, or uh, one of the other, Gregory Peck, one of the other big actors at the time, says, you do it to that too. And he says, I think they can assume she has the top of her head. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you go. Is there anything important about the trip? If not, we'll get there on our own. Take us to the next action. Take us to the next scene. You do not need to describe every single step um, unless there's something about those steps that are very, very important. I mean, if you tell us, I'll be right back. I have to go to the bathroom. And we go, see ya. Or hope everything comes out all right. And if you say that, I'll be. <laughs> or, you know, any other snide or funny remark, and you might actually have one you've never heard before. We're not going to all get up, walk with you, <laughs> see which stall you're going to pick. My mini's going to go with three. No, no, no. Two, 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 two. <laughs> <laughs> two. <laughs> we really don't care. <laughs> So that's a little bit of the problem I was having with my fic. It's because uh, I'm writing because I'm thinking about what? I want to have these big uh, plot points. I just wonder how to fill it. You know, I don't want to have a filler, but I guess I could. I you know, just have, you know, again, instead maybe just have a comment, you know, me telling me how the war is going. I guess I tell. Just have the characters just comment on how the war is going. And just, uh, what? You know? does it smell like? One of the things that happens quite frequently in your writing is you forget that there's more than two senses. There's taste and smell and touch and hearing and sight. By neglecting smell, you take away one of the most potent memory givers known to man. You will not, as a human being, remember color. I'm going to look at her, her outfit, and I'm going to say, she's wearing a red sweater. But come tomorrow, I may not remember it was red, and I may think it's pink, because she's wearing a very pink shirt, right next to a very green bag. So my point of view, they're right next to each other. By tomorrow, that Kelty helmet is green and purple and red. <laughs> so, we don't remember color, but we do remember smell. A smell or a sound can trigger a memory. Very, 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 very clear. Childhood memories, terrible memories, wonderful memories, all of them. Do not neglect them when you're writing a scene. If you are trying to figure out what else you need to do to flesh out this scene, make sure you have filled in all of the senses. That's your first step.
So she has to assess by everything else. Now, if you were to wake up in a sensory deprivation chamber, that is a coma on the hoof right there. So um, I think that's a really good thing to do. Try that exercise. If you don't know what it's like, blindfold fold yourself and wander around your house for an hour. You'll learn some things. What I was having trouble with with that scene is I don't, because it's supposed to be a really important scene, but I don't know what to do with it is like what she's thinking or what, like, She's thinking, I don't know how to fill in that space of, like... Why? <clears throat> Why is it a very important scene? That's, no, that's what you need to ask. What about this scene is important? Is it her feelings? Is it who rescues her or gets her out of it? Is it what put her in here? Is it the memories that it brings? You need to assess what the most important factor is, and then at that point, you need to go, okay, here's what I need to tell the reader. And you can string them along a little bit if it's appropriate, or you can tell them all at once. Beware the info dump. We don't really care. Spread it out a little. We don't need to know that much about medieval history. Um, but Think about what they need to know right now. That's what you need to figure out. Why is this important? And does it have to be in this format in order to get that across? say you have scene one, scene two, scene three, and scene four, right? Uh, scene one, perfect. Scene three and four, perfect. But scene two, it's just not working. Like, the characters at that setting needing that information just does not work at all. It needs to be cut. So how do you fill that gap between scene one and three? Because it's not going to make sense. Because in scene three, these characters know this information that they had in scene two. But if you're going to cut scene two because it doesn't work, then how do they get that information in scene three without like, reworking everything and making your story longer with more scenes to cut out later? Uh, the best way to do that is to figure out <clears throat> what did they get out of the scene in scene two. That just goes back to why is the scene important? Look over scene one. <clears throat> Look over scene three. What did they learn, Dorothy? And then write that down. Dorothy learns Glenda's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you could have told me this six hours ago. <laughs> but find out what they learned. Then write the fourth scene. 
What did they do with the information? They learned in C2. If you get stuck or you don't know what to do between a couple of scenes, let go of the scene. Move forward with the characters. Put a big red box around that scene that you are not writing right now. And then wait for the characters as they progress to tell you what happened. Because they will. They'll reference it. They'll remember it. They'll tell somebody else. So where'd you guys come from? Cleveland. And you go, Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the best way to do it. If you are having trouble figuring out how to get to a destination, you can skip over it and wait for them to let you know. That's a good way to do it. Then you get to decide if having that information in scene two is better in scene two or better coming out later. If it's better coming out later, I haven't gotten a five minute warning, but it's probably close. Any other questions? Anything else? Yes. Um, I have one story that. Oh, there it is. I have one story that I started, and it was going, the ball was rolling, it was just great, and then I have another friend that's very similar to me, and it's like a psychic or something. She published a story online that had the exact same plot. But I still liked my opening stuff, and it can go any direction I had to post it. Yes. What do you suggest when you have to revamp the entire thing? Um, do you? <laughs> I, I may not be the right person to answer this question. Um, <clears throat> My editor-in-chief, John, does that. He comes up with an idea, and he goes, I think I want to write a, uh, a story about a guy who goes deep sea fishing and catches something, I don't know, maybe like a marlin, and has a, a CIA uh, transmitter in it. And I go, oh, wow. Well, we just saw that on Chuck. <laughs> so, well, what would you do with it? I am catching a mermaid. Oh, yeah. And then it have him treat her the entire time like a fish. <laughs> like a trophy fish. Never acknowledging that's a mermaid. And I call it blue. But I would never actually use the word blue anywhere in the book. In the story. It'd be a short story. And there might be sex. <laughs> 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 so I would recommend that you talk to John Farmer, he's a very nice man. <laughs> um, like you said, you've got a bunch of different branches, but let me assure you, there are only like 12 stories. You know, man versus man, man versus God, man versus animal, blah, 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 blah. There are no unique stories. Her story that she just published, been published before, uh, probably by Shakespeare. <laughs> so, move on. Do your writing, do your story. Don't talk to her about hers right away. Mm -hmm. See where yours evolves. Yeah, even though you have the same plot, it's not going to be not very likely going to be the same story. It'll be your take on it. So, yeah. continue. As You need to determine how you wish to educate your reader. Your reader. Um, a couple friends of mine are doing this really, really, really cool uh, steampunk adventure. And it's like filled with action, and the woman gets stung by a mule in the first scene, and it's just awesome. And they're like careening around the corner in a Victorian car. Fabulous. Um, but. <clears throat> 
they're studying Egyptian artifacts. And they kept using words that were Egyptian. And I'm going, I don't know what that is. And they're going, oh, well, it's a blah, blah, blah. It's like, lovely. I hate to tell you this, but no one's going to stop reading your book to click on the wiki link. All right? If you can't convey your idea in a little descriptor, then maybe you need to not try to use that idea. Figure out what that idea is for and go forward from there. That way you can determine exactly what you want to say to your reader and how you want to get them to the conclusion. At the very least, be aware of the fact that if you leave breadcrumbs, you are quite likely going to get attacked by birds. <laughs> and that was a five minute warning. Thank you all very, very much. If you have other questions, please, please, please come talk to me.